luck, Mikhail. And remember now, the first PT outfit that scores with one of those new torpedoes will rate a headline in my weekly news bulletin. Oh, thank you, Admiral Love. Boy, that would be a great honor for the boys. <laughs> you, you know, Admiral, that is a great little morale builder, that weekly news bulletin. Yes, sir. I've wanted to put one of those out on Terra Tupa myself. I've had my requisition in for a portable printing press like this for over three months. Really? <laughs> well, it's a very relaxing hobby. <laughs> You know, I was wondering, Admiral, inasmuch as you will be out of the office for a few days on an inspection tour, and uh, nobody will be using the press anyway, if perhaps I could... Uh... Out of the question, Binghamton. I wouldn't part with this press if Admiral Nimitz asked for it. Oh, I'm afraid you'd have to, sir. You see, Admiral Nimitz outranks you by almost two strikes. <laughs> well, we'll be running along, Admiral. <laughs> you coming, Captain? Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute, oh, Mikhail. I take one last little look here. Oh, my... That certainly is a beauty, isn't it, Admiral? Yeah. <laughs> this is the roller here. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. And this is your, uh, your type fount down here. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. This must be, uh, oh, this must be the ink injector here. Oh, no, sir, this is the ink injector. Uh -huh. <laughs> you knew that was the ink injector, didn't you? Oh, got a blotter? <laughs> well, sorry, Admiral, bye. yourself a supply officer according to these shipping manifests that I hold in my hand. My printing press arrived in Terra Tupa three days ago. Now what I want to know... Captain Bingham, sit, sir. You'll never get one, sir. Shut your blabber mouth. I'm trying to locate my printing press. Well, that's just it, sir. You don't have to. I found it in the warehouse and I brought it right over here, sir. It's right outside the door. I don't care where it is. I'm trying to... Oh, it's me outside the door. <laughs> well, don't just stand there. Bring, bring, bring. Yes, sir. He's bringing now. As for you, you'll put yourself on report. Here it is, sir. Oh, be careful, you nitwit. Don't break it. Don't you see it says fragile on there? I'm sorry, sir. I didn't take the time to read what it says. Does it say anything else? Yes, it says uh, another end up is what else it says. <laughs> You carpenter, this is a red letter day for Terra Tupa. It's not everybody has its own private printing house like the Admiral. It's not every officer that has a has an empty crate. What is it? <laughs> sir, uh, it couldn't just walk off by itself. It, it must have been stolen, sir. Well, give the lieutenant an oak leaf cluster. Of course it was stolen. What I want to know is what numbskull in his right mind would steal a printing press. Who, 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 who? How else yes, he sing snip sound? Here you go, mate. That's 20 bucks. Wait a second. Right. Yeah, I think the rest of credit's good. Okay, mate. Who's next? Be a genuine war hero. Think of the square for only 10 bucks. Cruise is 25. And don't forget the special on capturing nip prisoners. Three for five dollars. Hey, sir. Stash the press. Here comes the skipper. Uh, I knew it's too good to be true. Okay, man. That's all for the day. Next edition, same time tomorrow. Scat. Stop on. <laughs> Hi, Jim. Hi, Jim. Well, uh, what's going on, boys? <laughs> Just get a little sun. <laughs> uh, uh, you wouldn't be trying to put anything over on your old Uncle Dudley now, would you? Oh, oh, you <laughs> uh, what kind of a uh, thing you got going here, boys? Uh, That's eucalyptus. <laughs> oh, really? Torpedum and Schultz wins Distinguished Flying Cross? Hey, that's pretty good. Especially for a guy in the submarine service. <laughs> All right, come on out with it, boys. Where did you South Sea Schlockmeisters get a printing press? And I want the truth! Well, you might say we sort of borrowed it. From Captain Binghamton? <laughs> of all the lame brain stunts! Don't you feather merchants realize that Binghamton won't take this lion down? He's been waiting for over a year to get this press. This press is going to go back right now. Let's go. Have a 
a hot stick. Don't pull on your commanding officer. <laughs> Gee, Skip, but we had a whole stack of back orders that had already been paid for. Please, Skip, let Tink stay behind and run off the back orders. And as soon as it gets dark, we'll sneak back to press. We promise. Please. <laughs> Pretty please. <laughs> Well, all right, you ate balls, but this is the last time. He's a beautiful human being. True. True. <laughs> Take your hands off. But I was just... Well, shut. Got any chances to get Mikhail and his press scrambers by surprise. Move out. Sight, isn't it? One of McHale's deadbeats printing his own obituary. <laughs> All right, stop the presses. You're under arrest. Don't shoot! I surrender! Ah, I caught you red-handed, didn't I? You're up to your grimy little elbows in it, aren't you? Where'd you get the printing press? Ah, where, where, where? Printing press? Yes, yeah, the printing press. Oh, you mean that? Yeah, oh, I found it on the beach this morning, sir. Yeah, I bet it's floated up there on a lily pad, huh? All right, Horace Greeley, out with it. What's your story? I'm innocent, sir. I never saw that machine before in my life. Yeah, I say that for the brig. All right, SP, you take this ink-stained wretch away and send out a searching party for the others. What others? There ain't anybody here but me! <laughs> I think he was telling the truth, sir. There isn't anyone else in sight, and the 73 is gone. Well, no matter, Carpenter. From now on, we divide and conquer, huh? We'll pick them off one at a time. And just take my little printing press here, put the first nail in Mikhail's coffin. Oh, that's a brilliant strategy, sir. Sir, is there anything I can do to help? Yes, go change your blouse for a disgrace. <laughs> Hi, Captain. Oh, Mikhail, well, you're early. I didn't expect you for another, uh... Oh, five minutes. Oh, yeah, bro. I knew you'd be in a hurry to talk this over, sir, so we came right over. Yes, sir. Now, as Bell's commanding officer, I want you to know that I'll be more than willing to hand him all the punishment he deserves. Yes, sir. Hmm. Very generous of you, Mikhail. Uh, what did you have in mind? Uh, well, uh, let's see now. Oh, uh, well, this confinement to quarters and, uh, uh, oh, extra duty. <laughs> and, uh, oh, a cut in his beer ration. Yes, sir. And we'll put him to bed without his supper for 90 days. <laughs> You'll send him to bed without his supper. <laughs> I'm going to kill him one of these days. With you. Oh, no deal. I've waited too long to get my hands on one of your delinquents. Oh, no, no, no. Wait a minute, sir. Look, you... I know you and I don't always see eye to eye, but that's no reason to take it out on Tinker. Oh, now, calm down, Mikhail. Ease off. I mean, do I look like the sort of a man that would railroad a poor innocent sailor? I uh, don't answer that, Parker. <laughs> now, gentlemen, I want to be fair about this, and Machinist Bell is going to have a chance to get his say in tomorrow. Oh. The court-martial will be at 0900 hours. Court-martial? For, for such a little thing? Well, but, Captain, you're going way overboard. Well, little thing. It's grand larceny, that's what it is. Ought to be good for about 20 years. <laughs> Don't get yourself excited, Mikhail. Everything is going to be fair and square. On it, Carpenter. Oh, yes. We are going strictly by the book. Captain Binghamton is president of the court, mm. and I am the trial counsel. No stones unturned, huh, Captain? Well, except for my printing press, which is Exhibit A, a um, few eyewitnesses, a couple of officers on the court-martial board that owe me a couple of months back pay, I would say that I've got a pretty tight case. Of course, a lot will depend on uh, Machinist Bell's defense counsel. Won't it? Mr. Parker. <laughs> Mr. Parker! You mean Mr. Parker's going to have to defend Tinker? Well, you 
can't do this, sir. Look oh, at I. You check your regulations. You check your congressman. It's all within my jurisdiction as president of the court. Uh, yeah, but, sir, I, I mean, Your Honor. I mean, Captain, Your Honor, sir. Well, I don't know anything about law. I mean, I object. I object. I object. You can't object. You're just an ensign. Now get out of here, both of you, before I charge you with loitering. <laughs> Skip, how'd you make out? Huh? Uh, he's here. Skip, Did you get Admiral Rogers on the scramble phone? Nah, nah, no dice, boys. The Admiral's out of his office. He's out on an inspection tour. Ah, uh, just our luck. Our only chance to save Pinkerton. Oh, no, wouldn't have done any good anyway. Pinkerton's got enough on him to send him up for 20 years. Uh, not if I could get a whole Admiral Rogers. If he knew about this court martial, I bet you'd think he'd get off with less than 20 days. Hey, Skip! Hiya, Counselor. How's it going? Yeah, well, I got it, Skip. I found a precedent case that proves that Binghamton can't send Tinker up for 20 years. Hey, let's, yeah, have yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's have it. Case of the United States versus Seaman First Class James McGinnis, Portsmouth, 1837. Naval Board of Inquiry disallowed defense's plea to sentence Seaman McGinnis to 20 years at hard labor, and they hanged him. Oh. <laughs> they hanged him? That's, that's not as good as 20 years. <laughs> I'll bone up. <laughs> Time for that. That's 15 minutes before that court martial starts. Hey, Willie! No. Come up here! You contact Comfrey yet? Just signed off, Skip. Admiral Rogers still ain't back. But they said they'd give me a message the minute he does show up. Well, Chuck, I guess it's up to you. We gotta stall that court martial until we can get a whole Admiral Rogers. Good luck, Mr. Parker. Be rooting for you. So long, Skip. You mean so long, Tinker. Relax. Maybe the Admiral will come through just like the Skip says. Admiral, Schmadmiral. I wouldn't make book on Tinker's chances if we wait for him. Well, now, you got a better idea? It so happens I already have. It's a thousand to one shot, but I figure we got to settle for any kind of odds we can get. Well, come on, group. Let's, Let's hear it. Let's come hear on. It. All right. Remember that Jimmy Cagney movie we saw last week? You mean the one where the mob switched murder weapons and the case was tossed out of court? Right. Now, who says we can't do the same thing? What are you talking about? First of all, we ain't got no murder, and then we ain't got no weapon. Think, Thimble Brain. Think. The only thing Binghamton's got to make his case stick is that printing press, Exhibit A. Oh, well, sure. Now, where are we going to find another press just like Binghamton's? It just so happens Admiral Rogers has one right in his office. Gents, this is a time for greatness. We either got to think big or let Tinker take the rap for us. Now, what do you say? I say it's a two-hour trip each way, so let's get this floating bathtub cracking! Let's go! 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 take the wheel! Willie, get down there, fire up those engines! Count three, here we come! At last, my own command! <laughs> That should only take about five minutes, Elroy. I've got the champagne chilling. <laughs> Good morning, class. Good morning, Trevor. Lovely day for court martial. Now remember, Chuck, you got to stall till we hear from the Admiral. All right, order, order the court. The court martial will come to order. I object. Object to what? We haven't started yet. Oh, well, yes. Uh, well, as a counsel for the defense, I move that this trial be postponed. Postpone the trial? What are you... Till when, 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 when? Well, how about Easter? <laughs> you see, the defendant's mother's a school teacher, and she can't fly here till the vacation time. <laughs> vacation time? You tell her to save it and visit her son on the rock pile. Now, sit down, shut up. We're ready for you now, Elroy. <laughs> Get a load of Elroy. I can't stand him. <laughs> this court is convened by Captain Wallace B. Binghamton, Commander, United States Naval Base, Taratuba. In the case of the United States versus Bell, Harrison J., machinist mate first class, charged with the theft of printing press, serial number A777. Furthermore, it is additionally charged. I don't go and play your part, Lieutenant. Just call your first witness. We're trying to call our first witness now. Will Captain Wallace Binghamton take the stand, please? Oh, that's me. Excuse me. 
Sir, would you state your name, rank, and serial number, please? Yes, I would. I am Wallace B. Bingington. I am a captain in the United States Naval Reserve. And let's not waste everybody's time. Let's just... I object. <laughs> uh, well, the witness only gave his middle initial, and we're entitled to know his full name. <laughs> Two-bit Perry Mason, you. <laughs> I beg pardon, sir, but the counsel for the defense has the right to question, sir. <laughs> Take by this, Mikhail. The B stands for... Burton. <laughs> you just stop that or I'll clear the courtroom. You stand there like a ninny, you ninny. Ask me a question. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, sir, would you please tell the board exactly what you saw on the afternoon of January the 11th? Yes, I would. I saw that man using my printing press, which he obviously stole, and I say that makes him guilty, right? Right, right. Wrong! Uh, Captain, according to regulations, you can't sentence a man until defense has had his chance to present his side of the case, sir. Absolutely. Uh, sir, uh, Your Honor, Cap Captain, Your Honor, sir. You see, according to Article 11, subparagraph 21, it states here... All right. Yes, sir. No more questions. Your witness. Now then, Captain Binghamton, where were you on the night of June 16th? June 16th? This is the middle of January. What's that got to do with anything, you numbskull? He objects, Your Honor. You can't call him a numbskull. I'll call him anything I want to call him. And once we're on first from you, Mikhail, I'll have you up for contempt. Now you get on with it, you, you, you defense counsel. You. Now then, Captain Binghamton. You, you say you saw the accused with your printing press, but can a man with your eyesight be absolutely positive of what he sees? Of course I'm positive. Where are my glasses? What happened to my glasses? Wait a minute. Get me my glasses, you pickpocket. Sure, sure, it's uh, me, Elroy. Don't just stand there sputtering. Find my glasses. <laughs> I don't have to put up with this sort of attention, everybody. <laughs> Ah, order, order, order. Is that what you're looking for, sir? Oh, Mikhail, are we the only ones here? Yeah, we're not quite. <laughs> Manton is crew to pick up the Admiral's printing press. All right, men, step lively and grab it. Up to you, up to you. What's wrong with the press? Oh, time for the 10,000 word check. I've got to rotate the rollers, give her a loop job, change the ink plugs. Take care of yourself. I like a man that's alert. Now then, Machinist Bell, would you tell the court something about your poor, miserable, underprivileged childhood? Oh, it was awful, sir. My father had no job. My mother had no food to cook, which was okay because we couldn't afford matches to light the fire. And then, then came the depression. Grab you your hanky, sir. No! This is a court martial, isn't this soap opera? I've heard enough from the accused. Enough? Enough? Dismiss. Well, well sir, I... You just... stand back, Ensign. You touch my glasses again, I'll clobber you a good lick. You get your soft sister out of here. Come yeah, uh, on, soft well, a counsel for the defense call the next witness, or shall we just get on with the sentencing? Oh, uh, no, no, no. We'll, we'll call a witness, sir. Uh, Mr. Parker requests permission to call uh, Lieutenant Commander Quinn McHale. <laughs> Refused. I object. All oh, right, just don't pay attention to anything he says. He's a bigger thief than the other thief. Well, I'd watch my language if I were you, sir. Why, that statement could be construed as slander. I object. What are you objecting about? I was the man who was insulted. I've got a good mind to see my lawyer. Hey, that's a good idea, Skip. He ought to get it. Hey, that's me. Hey, look, Skip, it's an open and shut case. I can get you $100,000. This is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard of in my life. Well, how about $50,000? Order! Order! All right, we'll settle out of court for $25,000. $25,000, right here, $25,000. Go ahead, go ahead. Go And I've always found Machinist Mate Bell to be not only loyal and honest, but a dedicated and devoted fighting man. <laughs> but also... This is sickening. You're dismissed, Mikhail. I'll see that your Boy Scout gets a merit badge right after we're through sentencing him. Now dismiss <laughs> 
Let's vote. I say he's guilty. Chuck, we still need time. Call Lieutenant Marshall. Who's Lieutenant Marshall? Just call Lieutenant Marshall. Guess what? We're going to call Lieutenant Marshall. <laughs> Lieutenant Marshall! <laughs> Introduce your witness. Oh, uh, Lieutenant Marshall, this is Wally Bingleton. Wally, I'd like to meet Lieutenant uh, Marshall. Sorry, oh. <laughs> oh, I could just scream. Are you sure this thing's going to work, Gruber? It's got to. How else can we clear the courtroom to make the switch? Verge, are you ready? All set. Beautiful. All right, men, get ready for battle. Willie, you make with the kamikazes. Christy, grind out that siren. Hap, hit that 50. <laughs> Okay, go! Air raid! Air raid! Hit the shelter! Air raid! Air raid! Everybody take the shelter! Let's go! Uh, sir, request permission to, to recess. Until after the war. Hey, hey, that's funny. I don't see any planes. What? You can't see them? You, you need glasses. Hey, see me a sick guy in the morning. Let's go, first. <laughs> Airtight alibi. What? Order! Order! In the... Oop. Oh, oh. Oh. So, uh, be seated, gentlemen. Excuse the interruption, Captain, but after certain urgent communications, I understand that there may be a grave miscarriage of justice going on here. Uh, a miscarriage of justice? Oh, well, no, sir. I just court martialing a common thief. For one look at the evidence, you'll see I'm right, sir. Ah, uh, permission to address the court, sir. Uh, I think I can explain all this, Admiral. You see, uh, Captain Binghamton here is under the mistaken belief that uh, machinist mate Bell stole his printing press. When actually it isn't his at all. I object. What do you mean it isn't mine? You're in contempt. I don't know my own property when I see it, shouldn't I? Are you sure, Captain? Beyond any shadow of a doubt? Well, of course I'm sure. There isn't a chance in the world that this isn't my property. You can see for yourself. It's all here in black and white property. You've got... Uh, you were saying, Captain? I am taking the property. Uh, uh, what? This is my machine. Release the prisoner. Well, Binghamton, if you ask me, we have the wrong thief on trial. <laughs> Surprised at you, Captain. I'm a little shook up myself. And you've got to come up with some answers fast, or the next court martial you hold will be your own. Don't you worry about a thing, sir. If we come up with the right kind of retainer, well, I'm sure Mr. Park will be glad to handle your case, sir. All right, Captain. I think we can squeeze it in. <laughs> I've got a present for you. <laughs> it's something Tinkerbell found on the beach this morning. I'm always wary of sneaks bearing gifts. What is it? Oh, come on, Captain. Wait a minute. Here. Come on in, boys. Bring it right in here. <laughs> Where do you see this? Thing? Huh? <laughs> Property of Captain Binghamton. That's my printing press. I've got you red-handed right now. You're under arrest. Oh, well, uh, no, you can't, sir. You see, you have no grounds. Uh, Tinker's already been acquitted. Besides, you can't try a man twice for the same crime. Get out of here, all of you. Get out of here. Oh, but, but, but Captain. Out! Uh, remember, sir, a block. Don't rub. 